Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're making crunchy kurma. This is no soft kurma. So if you guys would like to see how to make this ginger crunchy deliciousness, keep watching. I'm going to start this recipe with our flour and to that we're going to add in powdered milk, pumpkin spice or cinnamon, elaichi or cardamom and nutmeg and I always go in with fresh nutmeg whenever I'm using nutmeg. If you guys wanted to double up on the spices to make it stronger, feel free to. Now I'm just going to mix these dry ingredients in to incorporate. And if you wanted to use some coconut milk powder in here also, feel free to. Now I'm going to go in with my cold butter and I'm going to be using my fingertips or if you have a pastry blender, you can use that to break the butter into the flour. Mix, mix, mix until it resembles fine breadcrumbs or it's totally mixed in. Now I'm going to go in with ginger and I have my ginger in the freezer, hence the reason why I'm grating it. So whenever you buy ginger and you have too much before it starts to go south, you want to throw them in your freezer in a Ziploc bag and they last for a very long time. Now in goes condensed milk, which is totally optional if you're watching your sugar in your diet. And we're going to start mixing this to bring it together. Now we're going to add the water a little at a time. I do not like to knead my kerma dough soft. When you knead it soft, it tends to give you a lot of trouble when you're frying it also. Sometimes it doesn't come out as crispy as you would like it to be. So you want to add your water a little at a time and knead to form a very firm dough. So you mix a little, put it aside, mix a little, put it aside until it all comes together into one big firm dough ball. So you'll see here where I'm starting to bring everything together. I'm not adding any more water and you can tell how stiff or firm that dough is. Just keep kneading and it will all come together like this. Now once it comes together, you just bring it into one round dough ball. And I actually don't let it rest. We're going to be frying this immediately. So I'm going to cut this into four pieces because it's a really big piece of dough. And I'm going to be working with one quarter at a time. So just set the rest aside. You can place it in your refrigerator covered to keep cold so that you have a really nice cool kerma going into that hot oil so you get that crunchy kerma. Open out your dough. Make sure you flour your surface or else it would stick. And I would say just about a quarter of an inch in thickness because as this starts to fry, it's going to form layers and it's going to puff up slightly. I like to clean the edges so when I cut my kurma, I get really nice, straight, clean edges. And the leftover pieces, you can roll it up into a ball and add it to the other pieces of dough. I used a pizza cutter to cut the kurma into nice, thin, long, straight strips. You can use a knife if you want. And then going the other way, we're going to cut it. And I'll cut away at those edges and make sure they're nice and straight also. Now this goes into your oil that's on a low heat. Um, I, did, I Honestly, I don't check the temperature of the oil, but I should do that one day so I can tell you guys um, what the temperature is like. So on my electric stove, this was at a 4. So you want to fry it nice and low and slow. That's the trick, low and slow. And before you start going in there with your spoon, make sure it creates a nice crust. So when you start moving them around, they don't break apart. And you can see they kind of maintain that long shape. And that's how I like my kurma. So fry until they're nice and golden like this. If you like it 
on the much more brown side feel free to fry it longer but low and slow and you could see those layers right there I'm going to throw this into a big bowl lined with paper towels so it absorbs the oil and fry the rest and then the next step will be to make that sugar syrup to coat so we're going to be using two cups of granulated sugar with half a cup of water i've never used brown sugar for this um, i really don't want to waste the brown sugar so i've never tried it i just stick to the white mix until the sugar dissolves if you wanted to add some spices into the sugar mixture here feel free to you're going to mix 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 until it starts to coat the inside of the pot so you'll see me rubbing the inside of the pot with the spoon because i'm checking to see when it starts to crystallize and turn into that white snow mix 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 and you'll see me scraping again i'm going to show you what you're looking for you're going to see that white snow i know it's a little bit with the glare but that's what you're looking for you're going to see it once you see that you immediately throw your pad into your perma and start mixing mix 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 and it's going to coat the perma um, what I suggest you do is maybe do this in two batches it was a little bit much with all of that kerma in this small bowl it was a little harder to mix so probably do it in batches and it will come out way better and how does that look really beautiful because the bowl was so small the sugar wasn't able to coat thoroughly all of the pieces but it did turn out pretty well so I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe thank you all so much for joining me to have a happy Diwali from my family to your family. Comment down below. Let me know what you think if you try the recipe and tag me on Instagram if you post any of my recipes.